They're really excited. Very excited. We've got a guest appearance today by the lovely, the talented, the extremely buff, looks incredible in tights, Craig Hall, Wasatch finisher. He has no idea what I'm going to ask him. Craig, I want you to tell me something you nailed about your Wasatch. Craig finished Wasatch, this Pat Washer, Wasatch, when my, it's like 12 <laughs> degrees, I can't talk. Craig finished, finished Wasatch this Very past good. year. Something you nailed Very with your race that you did um, absolutely well that you would do again if you ran the race again. To be honest with you, I'm, I'm not a super fast, not a super talented runner. I wanted to cross the finish line, but I felt that I just tried to keep as best spirits that I could. No matter, no matter how hard it, no matter how much it sucked, I tried to just enjoy the suck. So That's awesome. I love, I it. Think I love did, it. I think I did okay with that. And, uh, and I'll hang my hat on that rather than my finishing time. Okay. And then something that you did not do well, that if you, you just, that was a fail for me. If uh, I did it again, I would totally change this. One, I was, I wasn't prepared for how cold it was, uh, right before, what is that big upper big water? I, I was not prepared for that. I should have had a drop bag, some type of jacket or vest or something. But, That's a good um, one because change of clothes at Upper Big Water, I, I always have. definitely have a warm yep. piece of clothing that if you need to ditch, because I froze. And then, uh, man, that night, going through the night, I just, it's the hardest thing for me. Uh, I'd probably, I don't know if there's a way to get over maybe caffeine or something, but I just got so dang tired. Yeah. But, but that night, I think it really started off because I got so cold at Upper Big Water. So I would have definitely put some type of vest or something. And then tried to figure out your night. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, any advice to newbies that just got into Wasatch? Um, enjoy the journey. Don't compare yourself to all the other people and all the other times. Just have it be your own personal, personal achievement. And yeah. Just get to that finish line. You can do it, 100%. Nice. Welcome back to another episode in our serious series, Running the Wasatch 100. I am joined again today, uh, this is episode four, by the lovely and talented Mark Robbins. What up? And uh, today's topic, is the QB5 also getting through the bunk. Mark, why don't you tell us what the QB5 is? Okay, so the QB5 is a concept that I learned from my good friend Quentin Barney, who in the local trail community is lovingly known as QB. So I call it the QB5 because it's just something he taught me. But the concept isn't, here's five things you need. It's, it's that during a race like Wasatch, it's gonna suck. It's gonna get hard. Uh, you're gonna go through some lows. And if you didn't, why would you do it? I mean, unless you have a perfect race and that means something too, but I think we're all out here chasing something like that. But. He taught me that those lows may last up to and beyond five hours. And when you're in the middle of a race, five hours feels like an eternity. It feels really, really long. And trust me, I've been there where within those five hours, you're like, all right, I'm gonna be done at the next aid station. But his theory is, your legs will come back, your lungs will come back, your brain will come back, your heart will come back, and you'll run better than you have all day if you just keep doing the right things and staying patient with it. So that's what the QB5 is, is know that it's gonna be difficult and be patient that you'll find your way through. So sometimes you're gonna have the QB7, 
the QB8, maybe even the QB10. So uh, I would say in all of my previous Wasatches, every single one, I have had a bonk of, in some form or fashion. Um, I'd say the longest, well, and they're all a little bit different. Some of them are very, very bad where you uh, just want to quit. Um, in 2013, I would say that was my QB seven or eight, um, where I tried to DNF at Scott's Hill and then also tried to DNF at Brighton. But as Mark was saying um, in explaining the QB five, uh, that year in 2013, I felt horrible. It, it was a disaster. I was cramping. I was nauseous. I was throwing up in a garbage can at Brighton. Um, it was it was not good. But I came back when I was able to get my stomach to reset and probably had my fastest last 25 of Wasatch. Um, it was amazing. Um, everything came back. Uh, I was able to move. I got my legs back. I got my pep and my step. Everything was back. I was um, pacing somebody that year late and all of a sudden this guy comes by us like he stole something that was Scotty. <laughs> He's just revived and flying. It was inspirational. Yeah, it was, it was something. It was, it was a great to experience and just helped me to to realize that you can come back and you will come back. Probably my most significant bonk slash recovery was on my first 100 miler ever in 2012, the Wasatch. I really struggled from desolation to Brighton. I was uh, fighting off some nausea. It was going through the night, so trying to stay awake. And just the sleepy tireds and the zombie walk was just adding up. And I got into Brighton much later than I was hoping for. Kind of dragging my feet and kicking rocks and overall I was just out of it. And uh Good morning. How are you? How's it Good. I um all of a sudden got to Brighton, saw my crew, sun started to come up. I drank a Coke there because my body was so depleted that Coke almost worked like actual cocaine. Um, and all of a sudden I found my groove again. And when I left Brighton, I was projected to finish about 30 minutes after cutoff and ultimately finished an hour and a half in front of cutoff. I was able to put some really significant time back on the clock, but it was me not panicking, not giving up, doing everything that I knew how to do. And ultimately those five hours lapsed and I was good again. So probably still my most favorite finish just cause I had to come back from such a dark place. Wasatch, inevitably, you're going to have a bonk or a low point. And the question is, how, how do you deal with it? Um, for me, one of the things that I've done is I've tried to put myself into situations uh, again and again and again where I'm uncomfortable, where I'm really uncomfortable, where it's hard physically, it's hard mentally, and I have to grind and I have to, I have to learn and I've had to learn how to be, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and that's something that somebody told me once and it's so true um, with Wasatch, you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So right now in your training, try to find ways to simulate getting yourself really, really uncomfortable and finding ways that you can mentally grind through it. And so that when you're going through it during the race, it's 
you know, this is, this is not something new. It's something you've dealt with many times in your training and you can just push through it. Mark, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely had those moments during Wasatch and especially like I've had them to where they ended up defeating me and I've not finished that race. And I would say for me, it's important to just stay really patient. Like we talked about earlier, it's gonna suck or it's potentially gonna suck and that could last a long time. And typically as ultra runners, we're problem solvers and trying to figure out solutions and they're there. But if we get panicked and start rushing and uh, that, that can definitely lead to negative outcomes. So it's being really patient, asking yourself lots of questions to understand what the source of your bonk may be, and then just start tweaking away at it. And when I'm really patient, that usually I'm a usually able to turn it around. It's where I get frantic that I'm not. Yeah, and I would throw in there, um, when you're talking to yourself mentally, um, if you start doubting yourself, self-doubt and negative, negative thoughts, um, they compound. And this is what will ultimately lead to a DNF is when you feel like I can't do this or this is too much or this is just going to get worse. And you start, these things start to, um, it starts to perpetuate a negative thought and, and that's what's going to lead to a DNF. And the, the one year I wanted to DNF and tried to DNF, um, really it started with, with a serious cramp. Um, and then, and then nausea kicked in. And when I had both of those, I started to think I can't do this. This is going to be horrible. And that's, you know, that perpetuated itself to the point where I was like, I'm going to quit. I'm DNFing. And lucky for me, I had a pacer that talked me out of it and I ended up finishing really strong in that race. But, you know, these are things that, you know, going in, knowing that you're going to have to mentally, you know, be positive and, and, and not perpetuate negative um, self-doubt and, and negative thoughts. It's negative self-talk. And that's the easiest said, hardest thing to do. Um, because when you get low, it gets really easy to not be able to see anything good. So my best 100 miler was the 2019 Bear 100 in Logan, Utah. And leading up to the race, people were asking me what my goals were. And I definitely had a goal. I wanted to go sub 30. But what I said to people is, my goal is to be the win the award for most grateful runner. And so the whole run, I just focused on things I was grateful for. And when those negative moments came, I'd flush them out with gratitude. Like, oh, thanks to the volunteers for being up here. Or, so glad I have these shoes that are holding up or so glad that gel went down as easy as it did thankful for that and it really was an anomaly of a day in that I didn't have a huge bonk definitely had low moments but I didn't have the QB5 that day and I feel like that is because I focus so heavily on running grateful if you don't have a bonk um, awesome. I, I hopefully you don't, but the odds are you're going to have one. And so do everything you can mentally and in your training to get ready and, uh, just go in with a really, really good attitude. It's like, uh, what Craig Hall said at the beginning of this video, um, attitude is going to mean a lot going into this race and you can talk yourself into anything. You can also talk yourself out of anything. Mark Robbins. Yeah, I mean, I would just say there's a chance you don't have one, but you're likely going to. 
and uh, enjoy it because at the finish line, those usually make for a more meaningful finish when you've had to overcome something like that. And so have fun out there.